What's up, folks? It's Dan here. We're back again for Q&A Tuesday. It is a fantastic day. I hope you're having a fantastic day. And we're going to go ahead and jump right into the questions. But first off, I have to say, Breath of the Wild is so amazingly good. It's like quite possibly the best Zelda game I've ever played. Right up there with Link to the Past and uh, the first one on the NES. So just let you know, it's amazing. It's really, really good. I'm going to go play it after this. I only have a little bit of time for work. Uh, anyway, um, so question for last week was, uh, when consuming audio online content, do you prefer to read stuff, watch stuff, or listen to stuff? <clears throat> so, let's see what folks have to say. First off, we've got BenRex777, who says, Hello Dan, the things I consume on the internet are as follows. On YouTube, Let's Plays, Drawing Tutorials, World Building Tutorials, Medieval Stuff, Science, but the only videos I watch on a regular basis are my subscriptions. Uh, you also read mangas, the interesting stuff on mangafox.me, and read manga t got today. Uh, web novels, um, anime on watchcartoononline.com, and all of it takes about an hour to read, but sometimes I lose myself, spend the entire day if possible. So it sounds like you spend a lot of time watching the stuff you subscribe to on YouTube, and then also watching some anime and reading some manga, so good to know. Um... In the newspaper was an article about the bucket list of an old lady. She always wanted to go to jail, wanted to wants to go to jail, but she was too well behaved for that to happen. Her niece heard of it and told the local police. The police paid the old lady a visit to put her to jail with handcuffs and sirens and everything else. She stayed in jail for a few minutes and had a blast. That's funny. Oh, wait, hold on. There's a reply here. Hello, Dan. I have to change my answer to your question a little. Yesterday I went to church and the topic was about fasting. I thought I hadn't realized that the manga reading and web novel reading has had a negative impact on my learning and even on my life. So I'll make a pause until Easter and after that I will see if I start again. But with YouTube, changes nothing. Good to know. Cool. Um, I did not see any questions here, Benny. Oh, wait, wait. Hang on. Pilot license is not a really expensive hobby. Uh, yeah. It can be a very expensive hobby, yes. That's part of the reason why I don't have my pilot license right now. I mean, I'm sure if I prioritized and completely reordered my life for it, I could probably pull it off, but mm, yeah, no, it's very expensive. Um, so, that's it. Benny says, have a nice week. Thank you, Benny. You have a nice week as well. Next up, we have Bipolar Warlock, who says, I missed the website. Been following your routines for a while off and on. They're great and very creative. I'm sure you get this all the time, so I apologize in advance, but are you planning on coming back with more content? Still waiting for guts, no pressure. So I replied to this in text form already, but I think there might be a little confusion. Um, the site is online. Viagamecharacter.com is online and updating regularly and has been for the past year or so. So um, I'm sorry if you missed that memo, but there is lots of new content we're doing. Uh, Samurai Jack right now, and we'll probably get to guts at some point too. Don't worry. Uh, so thank you for stopping by Bipolar Warlock. I hope that answered your question. Uh, moving on to that, we've got Simone Benique, who says, Thanks so much for replying, and yes, you got my name right. Don't stress about the surname. No one gets that right. Here in South Africa, everyone adds a Zulu pronunciation to it. I can't wait to see more female game character workouts. I've showed my fiancé and all your friends my your channel. They all love it. Awesome. Glad to hear it. So pertaining to your question about what we consume online, content-wise, I would say I spend the majority of time either listening to PewDiePie, Markiplier, Jacksepticeye, and game soundtracks while working my thesis theory and prac. I'm doing my master's in digital art, and my thesis is on pre-production art seen in video games and the effects of hyper-realism. Wow, that's awesome. Also, I always enjoy, um, I am always watching ZBrush and Photoshop tutorials. I also like to listen in on the Yogg's cast. I enjoy having background noise while I work, and game soundtracks are perfect for making some epic art. I agree. Game soundtracks are a great background for anything. I listen to game soundtracks when I write, too. Um, I really like what you said about marriage and how one makes a successful marriage. It was very insightful. My fiancé and I are getting married in June. We've been together for over four years, and I agree with you that we are constantly changing and keeping up with your partner and learning how they are growing as an individual is so important. Absolutely. I've seen too many relationships go stagnant because the people stop growing and developing themselves and start living the past, and the big thing you see there is lack of communication. Absolutely, 100%. My question for you this week is, well, it's actually two questions. I have severe asthma, so cardio is my nightmare. How can one work on their cardio without put, putting too much strain on their ability to live slash exist? <sighs> this is... I mean, I, I will do my best to help with this, but this is honestly a question you should talk to a doctor about more than me. Um, I will say I am not at all an authority on exercising with asthma. I've never suffered from asthma, and I haven't really worked with anybody that has asthma before. So 
I can't say for sure. What I will say is that cardio may be your nightmare, but you should try strength training, just weightlifting and body weight stuff. See if that affects you as well. Generally speaking, strength training does not rely as much on your cardiovascular system, but it will still uh, get you in very good shape, lead to lots of positive health changes. Getting stronger is always good, obviously, as well. So look into strength training, weightlifting, stuff like that. I've got tons of routines over on the website. Um, so to head over to BeGameCare.com, see if you can find something there that you like. And it, it maybe just cut out the cardio portion for now. Beyond that, I would honestly, I would talk to a doctor um, and potentially also reach out to somebody with asthma and find out what they do. Uh, it sucks. I wish I had a better answer for you. If I see information sometime in the near future and I, I'm thinking about it, I will definitely let you know. Um, but beyond that, I don't, I, I don't have much for you, unfortunately. Um, also, I used to do pole dance fitness for a few years, and I seriously hurt my left shoulder, and it's never really stopped being an issue. How can somebody work their shoulders and back with this problem? Um, need to get the wedding dress body. So I, I, I can speak a little bit to this, at least. Um, I also have shoulder issues. My right shoulder, this one right here, um, I have acute bursitis, and it, um, I think also my rotator cuff might be a little twinged, but I don't know. Um, shoulders are super super picky like they the shoulder your shoulder joint is the most complex joint in your body like by far like your knees your ankles your wrists fingers you know whatever the joints you got nothing on the shoulder because the shoulder moves and pulls in so many different directions um <clears throat> the good news is you don't necessarily have to let it stop you a lot of exercises will work your shoulders, and I don't know what your range of movement is and stuff like that. A lot of exercises will work your shoulders without actually having to isolate your shoulders, if that makes sense. Like, doing overhead presses and stuff, that works your shoulders, but it works your shoulders almost exclusively, and it's too much for some people with injured shoulders. I can do them, but if I have a really bad day with my shoulder, sometimes I can't. Uh, but... If you do, for instance, a bench press, you know, just lie on your back and push up, or a regular push up, lie on your stomach and push up, <laughs> um, that will actually, to some extent, work your deltoids and help build the surrounding structures in your shoulders. Not not as much as an overhead press, but similarly. And some people that can't do overhead presses, for instance, can do a bench press um, or a push up. As far as the back goes, you got some options. Um, if you've got a weight set available to you, deadlifts are great for your back and generally speaking are not that hard on your shoulders. Um, and again, I don't know the extent of your injuries, so I can't say for sure. And again, this is also a conversation you could have with a doctor, but at least I can speak to this a little bit. Um, you could do, uh, rows, either bent over barbell rows, which is where you bend over and you, you pull your chest, or dumbbell rows, look up, the look up the proper way to do these, by the way, don't just go off of my verbal descriptions here, dumbbell rows, those will work your back, um, I don't know how pull-ups and chin-ups would go with your shoulders, or lat pull-downs, if you're not capable of doing a full pull-up or chin-up or something like that, but you have access to a weight machine, you do uh, lat pull-downs, but there is stuff that you can do. Don't think that you have to do shoulder exercises to get some work in on your shoulders. And your back, there's lots of stuff. You've got, <clears throat> like I said, deadlifts, rows, pull-ups. I don't know. Sometimes that can be if you're on a shoulder. Um, uh, straight leg deadlifts. Good mornings. Weighted good mornings. Um, do, 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 do. Even like weighted trunk twists will still work your back a little bit. Um, so you've got some options, but I can't say for sure without knowing the full extent of where you're at. Um, in the end, <clears throat> you know, if all you can do is do squats and core work and, you know, stuff like that, you'll still get in pretty good shape. Like getting dress shape, typically speaking, I don't know what your goal is for your, or what your dress looks like, but wedding dress shape, you're, you're looking to basically just tone up, lose excess body fat. You don't have to work your shoulders or your back in order to do that. Um, for the most part, your back gets enough work in your day-to-day -day life that it doesn't need that much work unless you're going for like a classic like tapered V, like you're a bodybuilder kind of uh, uh, person. But <clears throat> if you just cut the excess body fat away, then you will end up having a pretty nice figure. 
almost regardless of what muscles underneath not the completely i mean obviously if you have absolutely no muscle buildup of any kind you know whatever but um as far as the pole dancing stuff goes i don't know if you'll be able to get back to that with the shoulder as it is that stuff's pretty heavy duty on you and and you know pole dance holding and pole dancing is awesome awesome strength building and training and stuff like that so um but in generally speaking, you can do a lot of stuff just by staying active in some way, whatever way you're possible, even if it's just like 100% squats and planks and stuff like for everything from here down. If you just work all of that stuff and you just eat properly, then you can have a lot of transformation going on even without being able to do much with your shoulders or your back. Uh, so I hope that answers your question. Um, let me know if I can you know, bring that any better for you. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's it. You say, have a stunning day. You have a stunning day as well. Thank you for stopping by. I hope I could help a little bit. Let me know how that asthma thing goes. Um, and then finally we got Storyman09 who says, hello, Dan. As an aside, before I answer this week's question, I liked what you said last week about marriage being a process and a skill. It reminded me of one of the Hebrew words for love. They have several words for different types of love compared to our one word for love because we're uncivilized barbarian Anglo-Saxons. Hey. Speak for yourself. I am an uncivilized barbarian Nordic Irishman. Thank you. Anyhow, I'm Jewish, but the word I was reminded of was ahava, which mean, and it means love born of the will. It's like committed love. Love when you may not really be feeling it, but you choose to love and bear with this process and person anyway. It's intentional. <laughs> I actually, uh, just an interesting thought you sparked last Q&A. I actually have a funny story. I have a friend of mine who told me, you know, he said, be, he said, <clears throat> loving someone, being in love with somebody and being married to somebody are all kind of separate things. He said, you know, loving somebody is just feeling strong affection for them, wanting to be there for being in love with someone is when they re obviously reciprocate. And then being married is, oh my God. Okay. Right now I hate you, but tomorrow I'm going to wake up and still love you. So it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> So basically the idea that, yeah, sometimes the person that you're with that you've committed to is going to drive you absolutely nuts. And you will be like, oh my God, why did I do this? But it's okay because tomorrow I'm going to wake up and I'm going to love you. So we're good. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's cool to know that whole uh, uh, Jewish and word, multiple words for love thing. It's interesting how different cultures and different uh uh, you know, languages have different words, like how the, the, the Inuit have like 18 different words for types of snow and stuff like that. It's, it's kind of speaking to the, I know that Jewish culture on the whole is incredibly community based. It's very, very family centric, very small community centric. And obviously for necessity in a lot of the situations that Jewish people have found themselves in over the past, you know, millennia. I don't know. Everybody likes to pick on the Jews. <laughs> but um, it's interesting that, you know, and it's not surprising to me that that culture has come up with so many different kinds of ways of saying or relating to types of love and interactions with the persons that you care about and stuff like that. So that's cool. Uh, to answer this week's question, I prefer reading and listening to stuff. I love to read things, especially if they're longer or in-depth, though I definitely appreciate articles that succinctly sum up its point. I like listening to stuff, podcasts, or radio in the background. I'm doing something just relaxing. Q&A Tuesdays are kind of interesting because while I normally watch them, I can also set them aside and listen to them and not miss much. Mm. My questions for you this week are, what's a good substitute for a pull-up if you have neither pull-up bar or useful tree branch available? And if you had an internal mindscape or mental world, what would it look like and why? Ooh, two very disparate questions. All right. Um, this is cool story, man. We're actually going to – I'm going to chain off of uh, – Simone's question. Here's another back exercise I didn't mention that you can do if you don't have equipment. So I'm going to go show it. We're going to turn the camera a little bit. You can see my door back there. Check this out. Do you like my PJ pants? Um, so those are door frame uh, rows. Uh, if you have a door frame basically anywhere or anything even close to a door frame, you can do those. Obviously, since you're you know leaning, you're not really getting the full work of a pull-up. But 
you can counter this by going lower and lower and lower and lower and lower, changing the angle by putting your hands lower and sticking your feet further past the door. You work yourself more and more and more. Um, it's not a bad back workout for what you can get and as far as space goes. Um, other stuff you can do. Bent over rows are an option um, if you have a barbell or something like that. Um, or even just like, <clears throat> like a backpack. Like bent over rows or one arm rows are both great back exercises, and you can do them with a backpack with rocks or uh, heavy books or something like that in them. Um, other back stuff. It's tough because most back stuff involves picking up some sort of weight, either yourself, which is pull ups and you know chin ups, or a barbell. Which if you don't have a pull up bar, I'm willing to bet that you don't have a barbell or a dumbbell on hand either. So if you do have a barbell or a dumbbell on hand, you know, do rows, do deadlifts, do stuff like that. Um, it's bothering me. Uh, if you don't, then, you know, door frame rows. Um, you can also do rows like that on, like, uh, a heavy table. If you've got a table to support your weight, you go onto the table and you hold on to the other side of the table and you pull yourself up on the table. Um, stuff like that. So... That's my best bet for you, but also I would say look into definitely getting a pull-up bar. They're generally speaking not that expensive. I think I got mine for like 25 bucks or something like that, including shipping. I don't know. Check out Amazon. Go to Walmart. You know, whatever. Um, uh, next, the other question was, here we go. This is, if you had an internal landscape or mental world, what would it look like and why? Um, frantic. <laughs> It would be a very large, colorful, varied world with tons of different environments all crammed into one area um, with like 800 different versions of me going all over the place. Like I realize I seem pretty chill and calm most of the time and that is I have learned to master myself and so that is how I have set my brain. What you don't see is that while all this is happening right here and I'm talking to you, I've got like a bazillion different things. My brain never stops. It never, ever, 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 ever stops. I had insomnia for my entire life because I couldn't turn my brain off. I've learned how to for the most part. But, oh my God, like, <clears throat> while I'm talking to you right now, I'm thinking of like 18 different other things that all have some sort of weight and significance in my life. And I have things like just constantly circling around in there. So there would be tons and tons of frantic activity 100% of the time, always, even while I'm sleeping. Just how it is. Um, and like I said, extremely varied landscape. Uh, uh, picture like a uh, forest right next to volcano right below, you know, like giant floating sky temple. And then here's the ocean and... <laughs> Actually, you no. Know, come to think of it, it's kind of like if you condensed a a, a a video game world map into like a hundred square foot space. <laughs> uh, yeah. So that's kind of what it would be like if I had to guess for what my uh, uh, mindscape would look like. Uh, that's it for this week. Relatively more straightforward questions for you this time around. Digging the Jack character spotlight and blog. Really glad Samurai Jack is coming back to get a proper ending. Me too. This weekend, I'm excited. Last blog post goes up on Thursday. I uh, thought it was really cool as a kid, but it was too young to really get into it while I was still on. With the coming back in your character spotlight, I have a good excuse now to get into it. Awesome. Hope you have a great week. Eagerly waiting the next Q&A Tuesday. Be awesome. Rock this week, Story Man. You be awesome as well. Have a fantastic week, Story Man. For stop Thanks for stopping by. Um, my answer to my question, when I consume online content, um, it really depends where I am. Um, when I'm at work, I have my phone in my pocket, so I can't really, you know, do all that much, but I, I'm at work for a 12-hour shift by myself. Really long time. So, I used to listen to podcasts a lot. Um, <clears throat> now, I actually more often just listen to audiobooks. I've got an Audible account. I get my free book every month. I tend to listen to biographies and or, um, you know, non-fiction books for the most part. I, I, I don't think I've listened to a single fiction book on Audible yet, actually. I really prefer to read those than, than, than listen to them. I just don't like, and I, you know, sometimes when you get those, like, people do voices and stuff like that. I don't like people doing voices or anything like that. I like to imagine it all in my head. So, um, 
But I got <clears throat> listen to books on I I'm sorry, I don't know what's up. Little ha oh, frog in my throat. Um so I listen to Audible books. Um I uh I do watch YouTube videos. Again, it depends where I'm at, like end of my day. I like to watch YouTube videos. I don't really we don't have TV at my house anymore. Like we canceled our TV subscription. We've got Netflix and we got uh, Amazon Prime and we've got HBO uh, Go or whatever the hell their a la carte services. And that's about it. Uh, actually, it reminds me. I have to figure out how I'm going to see Samurai Jack. I wonder if it's on the website. Um, so, yeah. So, I mostly listen to stuff right now just because how long I'm at work. Um, I also read a fair amount as well. Um, either on my phone. I've got Kindle as well. Or books in real life if I can. And, uh, yeah. So, I do consume some YouTube content, but it's usually when I'm too tired to do anything else. <laughs> um, so that's it for this week. Next week's question. Once again, I find myself sitting here and I have not thought of what I'm going to ask y'all for next week. Hmm. Got it. Okay. So next week's question. Tell me, and of course the rest of the audience here, something that you don't necessarily let other people around you know. Like, tell me something. Tell me some inner deep dark secret. Nothing bad. I don't want to hear about, like, the way you, you know, strangled somebody or something like that. No. But <clears throat> tell me something that, like, you know, most people around you don't know about you. Did Please, harmless, nothing weird or creepy or shameful, unless you really want to share it for some reason. But I will call the police on you. Um... But just tell me, tell me, and of course the being game current audience, something about yourself that the people around you do not normally know about you. Like something that you just either don't talk about for some reason, or something that you're afraid people that you know that know you in real life would make fun of you for, or you know something like that. Anything along those lines. So you can confide in us. Let us know what's going on because we have a super supportive community here. I really doubt anybody give you any guff for it, and I am always interested to hear what people's, you know, little harmless secrets are, and I promise I will share one of mine as well, okay? So, thank you for watching. As always, remember, live boldly, change the world, and continue to be awesome. Bye-bye.